In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can do a non-parametric test for a difference in proportions. This would be an alternative to using a two-sample z-test to test for a difference in proportions. If you remember, the conditions needed to use a z-test for a difference in proportions are that we need independence um, both between the individuals and between the groups. And then we need to check and make sure that n times p and n times 1 minus p are both at least 10 in both groups. If the sample size is too small, we're going to be able to use a test based on simulation. This is going to be very similar to the idea that we saw in the video for a single proportion. Um, and when we do it this way, this is usually referred to as a randomization test for a difference in proportions. And that's what it, you'll see in the textbook. So the example that we're going to use, we're going to look to see if symptoms of depression are more likely to improve if people to participate in yoga in addition to standard treatment. So we have data from 10 subjects who were assigned randomly to have either standard care or standard care plus yoga. We can see that those who had standard care, 3 out of 10 improved. Those who had standard care plus yoga, 6 out of 10 improved. Our test is based on simulation, and what we're going to do is we're going to use simulation to see what results might occur due to chance if the null hypothesis is true. I have the R code that I used to do this over here on the left-hand side. Um, I'm not going to go through it in huge detail. If anybody has questions about it, we will be happy to answer questions. Um, but essentially what it is doing, it is, it is um, taking the data and I have the responses and it's sampling them so that the responses are coming out in a different order. And it is then separating them into two groups that are the same size as the original groups. So what it's doing is it's randomly redistributing the responses between two groups of the same size um, and then calculating p hats from those and then calculating a difference in proportions. And so what we see over here is the histogram of the differences in proportions. And since our null hypothesis is that the difference in proportions is zero, we see a distribution that's centered basically around zero. And then the p-value would be the proportion of the simulated results that are at the sample result or even more extreme. So what we do is we just say, okay, well, I've got the difference in proportions that was observed, and I had that in my code earlier. I had calculated that. And so I'm going to look and see if the ones that I simulated are greater than or equal to the observed difference. By taking the sum, I'm counting how many of them had values that were at the observed difference or further into the distribution. And then dividing by the number of simulated samples is giving me my p-value. And the p-value comes out to 0 0.191. And this large p-value means that there's weak statistical evidence that yoga um, added to standard care makes depressed patients more likely to improve. Keep in mind, though, that I did see a difference in the direction I was looking for, and the sample size is very small here. So it's always possible that the study was lacking power, and then if I did a larger study, I might find a statistically significant benefit. So it's important to always remember that when we can't reject the null hypothesis, it just means we have weak statistical evidence to support the alternative. It doesn't mean that we've shown the null hypothesis is true, and I would probably still suggest continuing on this type of study with maybe doing a little bit larger study that would have more power. Thanks. Have a good day.